Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. You didn't really think we could leave Gravity Falls, did you? This is our thoughts on the Gravity Falls shorts, the Gravity Falls special, and the Gravity Falls unaired pilot. Uh, so where do you want to start? The shorts, the pilot, or the special? I'm thinking we should save the special for the end. Let's start with the shorts. That was a very creepy candy-stealing monster. Reminded me of... I think it was called Crumb? From Our Real Monsters? I can see the resemblance. I used to watch that show way back when. Yeah. I want to know how they figured out he likes golf clubs. More so than Summerween candy. Yeah, and I love how... He's an idiot. He got distracted by the... Oh, I like this movie. <laughs> I've actually had that happen to me. Oh, yeah, I can I can leave now. They're distracted by the TV. Oh, that's a good episode. <laughs> or, oh, I can get away with... Get, oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just sitting there, watching the movie, eating candy and golf clubs. And Seuss going, Oh, hey, want to go Stan? Dude, I have no idea what they're talking about. Can you clue me in here, Stan? Ah, <laughs> uh, Seuss. Definitely my favorite character. It's very awesome. Okay, so apparently we're looking at Dipper's mysteries first. I love the mystery mailbox. Yeah. That's one of the few times I'm like, Mabel! <laughs> we really could have learned anything. Mm-hmm. Assuming that the source was trustworthy. Mm, that's a good point. But she ticked it off, so now no one gets to know. <laughs> that was the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. You guys are not worthy of my knowledge. <laughs> if he's, like, infinitely aware of things, wouldn't he have already been infinitely aware of the video? You would think so, but apparently... The entity or entities can only directly interact to something that is submitted through the mailbox. Hmm. That's a valid point. I also like the hide behind. Even though it's extremely creepy, I don't think it was out to harm anyone. No, it seemed like it was just having fun. I mean, in real life, that would be incredibly creepy. Oh, yeah. I think it's based on that little feeling you get. Not just that someone's watching you, but someone's actually standing right behind you and you turn around and there's no one there. Or you turn around and you see, like, something off in the distance and it makes you run a little bit quicker back to your house. Very much that sort of feeling. Uh, I want to know, did the high behind just keep an owl with a maraca just in case it ever got close to being caught? Maybe. <laughs> or it kept a maraca on hand and went, ooh, owl! Hey, this will work! Because it made the sound without the maraca. Because it was trailing Dipper at the end, which was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Also, all the mirrors, Dipper down! Dipper down! <laughs> uh, this show, even in its shorts, are awesome. Uh, let's not forget the uh, visual pun on Lazy Susan's name in that episode. <laughs> you mean the fact that she kept spinning? Yes. I feel sorry for that guy who all he wanted was his coffee. Can I get a refill, ma'am? Ma'am? At one point he just has his hands up and shrugging his shoulders. Like, eh. Oh, it's Gravity Falls. What are you going to do? I was like, Daddy's doing an interview right now. As they finish chopping down the tree, smack right into the house. Which is, was it their house or someone else's house? Hard to say either way. Hmm. Also, of course, the Corduroy's favorite color is flannel. Out of all of Dipper shorts, the creepiest one was definitely the head in the lake. There, there was nothing attached to the head. And just a head by itself could be creepy, but the way the tendrils of like the island of the head were coming down, it looked like one of those Halloween things where you know you have the head with just part of the neck, and then there's like part of the spine and maybe some flaps of skin. Mm-hmm. And I think the little bit of speech you hear from it as it's raising out of the lake is probably reverse. So we could probably play back the audio in reverse and actually hear what it's actually saying. It's probably something funny like, get out of my way, I need to get out of here. Or something even more mundane like, oh, I forgot the groceries. Yeah, or oh, my tooth hurts, or oh, I'm hungry. 
I, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Would you get in my mouth? <laughs> Could you get in my mouth, please, sir? Sir, you over there. Who you over there? Get get in my mouth. No, no one got in my mouth. Not not a single person. No, no, no one got in my mouth at all. Not not all day. All day, no one got in my mouth. Oh, I'm gonna go call my mother. <laughs> Yes. Amazingly, I found the head in the lake much creepier than the head that Lux just impersonated. Well, that one's just funny. Yes, but it's trying to eat people. This this one, we don't have motives or anything. We just know it's a giant floating head and it loses teeth. Mm-hmm. And why did those little creatures only build half a human robot? Yeah, and how... Did no one ever see the right side of it? Because in the real world, you could stand in just the right spot and see that half of it was missing. You wouldn't even have to flip it around. Because when you have a person, you could just move a little bit. I mean, you could stand right where I am standing right now and look at your face and see that there was half of you gone. <laughs> yes. Not to mention that all those times out in public, okay, so he's riding backwards on the escalator. But there's still space where people walk by before you get to the part of the escalator where there's wall that's protecting it also when you get to the top of the escalator the escalator is not going to be up against a wall there's going to be stuff on both sides so i mean it was interesting but it's like how did that work and why didn't they build i think part of the joke that it's an animated show so it all exists on a 2d plane probably so that was kind of a fourth wall joke, if you think about it. Good point, because logically in a three-dimensional world, it doesn't make sense. But in a 2D animation, I also want to know what happened to those creatures. What did those glowing cubes do to them? Did, were they teleported back to another dimension? Did they die? Did they erase themselves from existence? Was it like mm. a miniature time wish? Because they got discovered... It was like basically a suicide pact. Uh, okay, we get discovered. Mm -hmm. Nobody stays around to tell. Like those old stories of spies like biting into a fake tooth and poisoning themselves and stuff like that. Yes, or having an explosive or something in them. Mm -hmm. That's surprisingly dark for a children's show. <laughs> Even for Gravity Falls. Well, maybe not for Gravity Falls, but yeah. But it's vague because you don't know what happened because they point out of existence. So, oh, back to the home world? Teleport to another dimension? Nobody actually dies. Yeah, they just get sent off to the medical planet. Cough, Voltron, cough. Or to another dimension. Cough, Dragon Ball, cough. H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> oh, you mean the home for infinite losers. <laughs> Oh, uh, but back to the shorts. Yes. So, so Dipper's little recordings and Mabel's attempts to be in them or subvert them. Yes, the girl trying to crush my head right now is Mabel. And I just realized his is the least edited of any of the shorts. You know, fake edited compared to the other ones. Yeah, and if you think about the order that we watch them in, we watched all of Dipper's first, which had the least amount of editing. And then it was all of Mabel's, which had the fun editing. Yeah, she abused the heck out of editing. Yes, uh, also seemed to do a pretty good job of it. Edit, snap, edit, snap, insta-fix. How do I get here? <laughs> <laughs> and then Seuss is like... Every video creator, when they first start, ooh, I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do that. Oh, that would be great. I'll add that in post. Lightning! And everyone's like, I don't see any. I don't get what's going on. Do it all make sense later? Yeah, I still don't get it. Well, I gotta say, the Dipper and Wendy one was like my favorite. Seuss's Fix It, or Fix It with Seuss. Yeah, I was trying not to jump all the way to the end, but I wanted to talk about the editing style of mm -hmm. the three. I'm just saying that's my favorite. Now we can go back. Yeah. Oh, I like that one too. And Mabel, oh my goodness. Also Gravity Falls Public Television. Yeah. That's actually near the end too. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying 
her clips look like something that could be on Gravity Falls Public Television. Mm, I think all of these, like, are on Gravity Falls Public Television. Probably, which also makes you wonder why hasn't the blind eye gone after Dipper? Yeah, I think they, like, need anyone to do with the Pine family alone for unknown reasons. They've forgotten about it. They just know, don't touch the Pine family. Yeah, well, probably McGucket. He knew what Ford was messing with. So that could have actually been a thing. Okay, so Mabel. Wow, you don't know as much as you think you do. You, you're you an expert on all this stuff? I gotta say, I would watch this show just because of Mabel. I, I mean, a personality like Mabel. It doesn't have to be Mabel, but her personality and stuff like that. I wouldn't follow any of her advice, but I'd watch the show because it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. But it's like, is any of this work i uh, i'm just wow though i i have to say i think my favorite one was the makeover episode <laughs> the tackling yes the tackling and specifically seuss uh, i need to watch it again because someone thinks it's david bowie reference someone knows it's a labyrinth reference because that's exactly how jared looks Tight pants, fluffy hair, v-neck shirt, large collar, crystal ball. Hmm. That's Jared. Hmm. Uh, I guess I'll watch it again, but she's probably right. She usually is. So I gotta say that the Mabel episodes are also the best edited out of the ones that are heavily edited. She does better use of it. It's like, oh yeah, time skip. Oh yes, quick montage. You know, collage, whatever. Yep, and there's also less mistakes left in. Mm-hmm, so it's a cleaner edit. Mm-hmm. Though Dipper probably wouldn't want to edit his very much, even on the parts where he said edit that out, because his are for evidence. Mm hmm So the less altered the film is, the better. Mm-hmm. And he probably has copies of the raw footage for evidence in the future as well. Mm-hmm. Also, puffy stickers can save your life. That still hurt, though. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, all those episodes are pure gold. Yeah. Uh, her sticker album was so much better organized than mine. I think I may have tried one of those, especially the pre-supplied ones, where collect all these stickers. Here, we have a place in the back of this book for you. You know, with outlines of all the stickers you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. The sticker albums that were usually tied back into some TV franchise. Mm -hmm. But no, I had an actual sticker album. I also had some sort of um, ads that I also used as a sticker album. It was actual newspaper that had my stickers on them. Hmm. And color, and wow, you blinded your grunkle. Uh, yeah, I hate rainbows even more now. <laughs> hate color even more now. Make sure those bandages are nice and tight. I'm not giving my life savings to some doctor. Some quack. Quack. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also going back to the dating episode. <laughs> my abuelita said I was a perfect man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 9,000 dating questions. Uncle Stan, you are barely dateable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will still take that as a win. Also, I'm only here because you promised me bacon. Here you go. Yeah, I'm pacified. <laughs> and poor Dipper. I love how she's like, uh... You know what? You you just be you. It must have said minus 12. <laughs> yeah. And then Zeus, on a scale of 1 to 5, you got a 12? How is that even possible? Apparently, Zeus is the perfect man. Except for the woman who... Wanted to date a pig. Yes. Well, the fact that he ends up talking like Neil deGrasse Tyson probably helped a little bit. Uh, probably just a little. Also, Handy can fix things. Mm. Takes direction well. Moderately charming, especially when he's not trying. Yeah. Extremely loyal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highly dateable. Highly dateable. Mm-hmm. To Seuss's fix-it challenge on scale of 1 to 10 of awesomeness with video editing clip art. 
Th thank you, clip art, but no, I don't feel like it. <laughs> like, no, not right now. It's like, dude, you put it in there. Which, obviously, you scripted it that way because it's there and you say not right now. So you actually wanted it there because you recorded yourself doing that and saying no before you went to your editing program to add it in. I also love how it's like, yeah, next episode we're fixing my computer because I think some of those graphics broke it. <laughs> yeah, well, it was rendering. Like, yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> my computers have never overheated while rendering. They have taken hours to render. I'm just so glad the machine I have now does it in about real time. Almost real time. Though I do have to do a second pass of compression to make, make sure it's reasonable to upload to YouTube. Hoi! Well, if someone wasn't so addicted to their layers... That's only for the drawings, and those come out quite fine. I don't have to sit there and wait for a half an hour for it to finish re-rendering. <laughs> Yes. Zeus and Mabel teaming up on the cuckoo clock. I am moderately afraid that you two... <laughs> ...have joined forces. Well, well, it stopped making that noise, so yeah, 10 out of 10. Oh my god, this is a lifelong dream. Drop. Shatter. Uh, laser eyes! Dude, what is going on? I don't know. Oh, it'll make sense in post. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> the one thing that it doesn't show off is that takes a long time to do. Those editing, those kind of special effects. Even simple stuff like that takes a long time to do. I should know. I tried. <laughs> Back in media class in high school. And I was using an old Macintosh that took forever to render a 640 by 480 3D basic scene with one light, one 3D model of a sphere, and a flat plane. It took the, almost an entire class time to render. It's fun to play around with, though. <laughs> yes. So, it's on to our favorite of the two of Seuss's fix-it things. Fixing up the golf cart. Pimp my golf cart. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it's fixed. Hey, great job, Seuss. Yeah, but it could be rotter. Also, yeah, we were totally using the golf cart for work, and... We have no idea how it broke. <laughs> well, pfft. Uh, attempting to jump over something with a golf cart. Not a good idea unless the golf cart has enough boost. But with nitrous. Yeah. Right into the mystery house's roof. We should watch the series again just to see if there's a hole in the roof and the, after the second season. Where the golf cart would have ended up. Because these shorts ended up between season one and two. So, entirely possible. Especially considering all the repairs that were being done on the shack. We should probably also look for that cow. Mm-hmm. That evil, evil cow. Yes. Evil, laser-eyed cow. Yes. And mark one more thing against Pacifica, you know, against the Northwest family. Oh, your factory is dumping toxic sludge. Like, Gravity Falls isn't weird enough on its own. Yeah, with how weird Gravity Falls actually is, it makes it even more potent. That would instantly mutate things. Like that, what was it, a, a goat, I think, in the background that suddenly had two heads? Yep, not our goat, though. Another goat that looked very similar. And sneaking into the movie theater... That was an overly complicated plan, and it was awesome. Yep. Though you kind of skipped over other episodes again, because we actually watched the two TV shorts first. The public access stuff that you were referring to earlier. Yeah, just the poorly done commercial for the Mystery Shack, and uh, that after-school special style PSA. Yep, and how Gideon still... Doing stuff from inside the, the prison? Who's actually still watching Gideon and thinking, Oh, this guy's so innocent. He got framed. Even if they're not thinking he's innocent, think about reality television. Mm, that's a good point. That may have been what they were making fun of there, because each one of the TV things in the shorts actually mirrored a different type of TV program. Mm -hmm. And little Gideon's big house was 
like one of those reality TV things. I heard that they're looking to do one on the Mustang program. The one where convicts get to work with the Mustangs. Hmm. I'm like, great, now I gotta go jack a car or something, because I'd like to work with Mustangs. <laughs> uh, you would be too good at jacking the car. They would never catch you. Ah, good point, good point. <laughs> ah. Okay, so Little Gideon, the PSA. Detective. I'm not quite sure if I'd actually watch that show, but that little scene, like, so was he throwing the bird in the water to bring Detective back? Or was he just like, oh, he's a duck now. I guess I have to feed the ducks. It, it was just kind of odd. And it's like, did the duck that came back, was it actually Detective? So it's like, ugh. W would you know? I mean, because if he doesn't bother to talk and... That was interesting. Oh, yeah, your partner's still alive and oh wow you guys are getting along better and well, you always hate when I do those jokes you can't do those jokes we can do those jokes typical ratio stereotyping mm -hmm. you can't say this if you say it it's offensive if we say it it's funny now we can go move on to the overly complicated plan to get into the movie theater <laughs> <laughs> also I can't believe Thompson actually drinks the popcorn oil butter it's yeah. not really butter it's oil also thompson has a job yeah yeah also the ponies are filled with explosives what is this a michael bay production probably so where is the overly hot girl who doesn't really belong there but they keep doing a lot of weird angle shots on and you're like i get who's buying tickets for this movie now uh, probably on screen when they cut to Mabel calling out her line. Mm. Pony. More like baloney. Seriously, if I'm ever in a theater and somebody does that, I'm throwing my popcorn at them. Or your drink. But the drink was more expensive, so. Well, popcorn, I can pick a single piece to throw. Hmm. Depending on the place, you can get a refill on the drink. But they did get pretty good seats, and I mean, they had already paid for the tickets, so... Technically, and I bet you Mabel wasn't even like planning on eating that candy bar. I bet it was just in her sweater. Probably. Also, considering the fact that Dipper taped all of those snacks to Thompson in the festival episode, he doesn't exactly have the moral high ground here. So, though that short was probably before the Woodstick event. Yeah, I think Woodstick is in season two, so yeah, it would be. Mm hmm. But still, you know, we see in later episodes that he's okay with it. But in the shorts, he's like, no, no, get out. You guys are all banned. Also, power trip much? The town of Gravity Falls is all you have for an audience. Do you really want to get rid of customers? I mean, okay, it's the Pines family, but still. Yeah, but Grunkle Stan actually paid for tickets. Yes, because he complained about the price. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to kick them out, because next time he's going to steal. Mm-hmm. Also, music industry, movie industry, this is why you don't use copy protection. It doesn't save you money. Just thought I'd point that out. The more complicated you make it for your actual paying customers to be able to actually watch their content where they want to watch it, the more likely they're going to steal it. Just to let you know. Oh, the day the movie and, and music industries are listening to our channel? Yeah. We'll probably actually have a contract and won't be able to say stuff like that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So if you're actually listening... <laughs> <laughs> Pilot? Pilot. Remarkably similar, yet oddly different. Mm-hmm. Specifically the designs for the characters. Though so Mabel and Dipper are very similar. Grunkle Stan had the most changes. Yes. His was the most different out of all of them. Also, the pilot didn't include Seuss or Wendy. Yeah, though apparently they were shown in other clips to the interesting because I, I found another video with clips from other pilot uh, material where Zeus and Wendy are actually shown. Also completely different from their current designs. Well, if my understanding of the pilot is correct. It was supposed to be a snapshot to get the people with the money to understand the basic concept because the book 
the Dipper is looking into is completely different. And that shortened amount of time, assuming that the unaired pilot that we watched was unedited in any way, there was not enough time to explain finding the journal and the trust no one and all of that. It's too complicated for something that's just summarizing. Mm -hmm. This is our general concept. This is the kind of stuff we're planning on doing every episode. So on and so forth. We have these two kids who are the main characters. There's also probably a 30 second pitch. 30 second to a minute pitch before the actual pilot aired for the executives. To give an overarching view. You know how long they think the series will be. What the goals. All of that. But mostly same voice actors. And listening to a lot of it was like listening to the first episode. And right down to Smebulok. And a little bit of thing that I'm pretty sure I read on, I needed to double check, but the voice actor for Dipper, even though he's in the pilot, he may not have, depending on how things went at the time, he may not have actually showed up for the actual show. Because apparently he got a contract for another cartoon that was expected to do better, and he was already signed up for that show under a contract, but the show fell through, so he was able to come back and go, hey, is this still open? <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing for Gravity Falls. Yes. Also, we lost the wizard-type leader of the gnomes, but we got to keep his voice actor. Because mm -hmm, I'm pretty sure it's the voice actor who plays the time traveler. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's Blandon. Also, interesting change in the resolution with the gnomes. And the riddle's much funnier, but the whole thing with the leaf blower and trust me with Mabel sets a lot more of the tone for the series. Once again, I think that was more of a time thing. Mm-hmm. Also, it gave a good example of what the show's like. Oh, kids, I made this new thing. Oh, it broke. Okay, you guys want to eat a bunch of freezer pops? And things tying back through the episode because the blank stick was the riddle that they had to answer. So they all had their own answers at the beginning of the episode, but they didn't get the definitive answer off the ice cream stick. Also interesting, the gnome's turning to stone. Mm-hmm. I love how Dipper replaces the one he broke. Mm-hmm. And I think if the series would have progressed that way, that gnome would have unfrozen at one point. Probably. Either during Weird Mageddon or whatever version of Weird Mageddon the show at that point would have had. Also, I prefer the show's art style, the one that the aired show had, over this one. And I think it's because I don't think they would have gone with this style anyways for the actual airing of the show in this pilot. Because I think it was done cheaply because a lot of pilots usually don't have a big budget. So I think a lot of the stuff they used animation-wise in the pilot was there because of budget reasons. So having a bigger budget on the actual show probably gave them a lot more room to do what they wanted to do with the show's style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say either way because, you know, we watched the entire series, so that's the art style I'm used to. Also, I've learned that art can be secondary to story and secondary to gameplay. It can look like garbage, but if I'm having fun, mm -hmm. also it can be beautiful and boring as heck. Everyone insert your own video games and TV shows here. You probably know some of the ones I'm talking about or have your own that I never even heard of. And speaking of beautiful and probably have one more time playing, could, could Zelda, Zelda please, Zelda, anyone, anyone? Why does no one want to give me money to play Zelda? <laughs> <sighs> Not one person gave me Zelda today. Not one person. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go call 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 Link now. <laughs> oh, that actually would have been awesome if the old Nintendo hotline you could call Link. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not understanding what you're saying. I just want to know how to. Yeah, I. Gosh, darn it. Call back. Hey, listen. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> no. Like when the gnomes were coming after them in the golf cart, while it's still very similar to what happens in the pilot, the animation in the demo version was much rougher. It was less individualized. It looked more like some sadistic version of World of Goo was chasing after them. Though they kept a lot of things like firing the gnomes, mm -hmm. you know, those pointy hats and bows and... Mm -hmm. And Shmebiok. Mm-hmm. Though they glossed over in the canon pilot, she was going to have to marry all of them. But in the demo pilot, it sounded like she was only going to have to marry the wizard one. 
But I mean, even Norman's design was very similar. The jam on the face and the falling and the clumsiness and the dropping the hand. And the reference back to, I can't talk today. Mm -hmm. So I guess that means that the demo pilot did an excellent job of conveying their intentions because the actual pilot seems to just be an expanded version. Mm -hmm. With more of the story they actually wanted to fit in, the reference back to the journal, where it came from. Because usually pilots could actually be placed anywhere in the timeline of the actual show. You know, the demo pilots to show people is usually like, yes, it could be an average episode of the show. It's usually not really an, a beginning episode where we are introducing characters for the first time. It's designed to introduce the concepts of the characters. So but this one's actually a first episode kind of pilot. Because you still have a little bit of introduction of how they got to Gravity Falls and wow, stuff is weird here. Also, going back to the shorts, we completely skipped over Stan's tattoo. Hmm. Which we now know comes from him falling back and burning his shoulder. Yes. How long have you been standing there? Give me that camera, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you are never going to see my tattoo. I thought you said you didn't have a tattoo. I don't. Give me the camera. I don't, but you do. Ah, no marker. <laughs> Goober. I mean, it's even the same color ink as his birthmark. That was mean, Grunkle Stan. Mm-hmm. Do we move on to the special now, or is there more? I can't remember. The show has a great job of filling your head with everything. Yeah, so let's try to go on to the special, and we'll see what else happens. Because basically, watch the special. Wow, they didn't even cover half the stuff I haven't looked up yet about the ciphers and the codes and the opening and closing, but oh, look at all the stuff I mix. Lux is enjoying the the heck out of what I did miss because I wasn't bothering to look. I was just enjoying the ride. Like she actually missed that the glove had six fingers. When Stan was putting on the glove to turn on the machine. Yes, I noticed that it didn't go correctly on his hand, but it didn't click that it was because it had an extra finger. And as a rebuttal, I would like to direct everyone to go back to and look at his drawing of Dipper and count the number of fingers on the book. I'm pretty sure I counted correctly, but apparently during one of the edits, I removed a finger. Probably without realizing it. <laughs> that or it's low enough that it actually got covered up by the arm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, Time Baby conducting the interview and using time wishes to get things out of the creator. From what I understand, the creator actually voices Uncle Stan. I didn't realize he voiced Seuss. And he voices a couple other characters throughout the show I didn't realize. Well, this might also be why they have such good animation is their staff is multitasking. Which means, oh, you're saving on voice acting cast because you're having one person do multiple characters. Also, if your internal staff is doing it, they probably don't cost as much as the big name voice actors. I mean, you did manage to get one of the big name voice actors. Mm-hmm. Actually, a couple of them. The voice actor for Ford is actually a pretty big voice actor, too. Well, he's actually a big actor, period. He's been in several major motion pictures. One you may know. The first three Spider-Man movies as Jane Jonah Jameson. <laughs> yep, that's who played Grunkle Ford. And of course, there's Weird Al. Mm -hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson. And there's a couple other in there. Mark Hamill was the one you were referring to. Yeah, there's probably others that I need to look up the wiki for. Yeah, we, we still haven't plunged into all the ciphers. Speaking of ciphers, I feel like we're being watched. Oh, yeah. Uh, where Bill came from? He actually came from the... Oh, my God. That makes so much sense. Well, that's what he looks like. He looks like the top pyramid off the dollar bill. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty obvious by now. That's who I'm drawing. <laughs> because he should be easy. And if you see me struggling, that's probably because Destiny likes to go, You said something was easy! Well, it's not like it's your first time drawing him. Maybe. <laughs> That's a hint. You want to keep a sharp eye out for it. Uh, and it may not be visible on your mobile devices. Yeah, 
especially depending on the site you go to. I recommend DeviantArt. The quality's better there. <laughs> oh, so anything else? It's a deal? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, mean, anything else in episodes? <laughs> uh, it was interesting to hear basically so many of the characters were inspired by friends and family and also the thing of basically everyone took the coolest person they knew and we put that in a pool and there was Wendy. Yeah, that explains why she's so freaking cool. Yes. Oh, uh, and how they doubled down on the ciphers and hints and clues and Easter eggs in the second season because everyone loved them in the first one. They're like, okay, we'll really take it to the next level. Oh, nobody will get this 10 minutes after the episode airs. I found this thing. How did you? I mean, I didn't even... What? Because I'm betting that people found things that weren't even things. Because that's what fan theorists do. <coughs> Shipping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Like the, You do realize those characters are never... Don't care! Ship it! But you realize they'd kill... Don't care! Ship it! You want them... You just want them to be... Yep! I, I think the subtext in season three is really clear. I have no idea what you're referring to, but it's still hilarious. <laughs> I ship it. Ah! Yes, it's this wonderful AMV. Yes, the, the AMV is really good. The original parody song actually also does a shot-for-shot -shot matchup of the original song's video. So props to both. Hmm. I think we should wrap things up. Seriously. Seriously. Seriously, no one got in my mouth. Not, not, not one person. Not, not, not one person all day. Not, not one person has clicked a link here. Not, not, no, nobody clicks subscribe. Not, not, not one person. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call YouTube. <laughs> I don't actually have a number to contact them. We're not big enough for that yet. I say yet. Come on. Come on. Subscriber, subscribe, please. You know what to do. Like, subscribe. Though liking doesn't really do anything for the algorithm, except on your own page, because that's what liking does. It, it puts more of our videos up at the top of your feed. It doesn't actually change our global feed ranking. Scru subscribing does, though. As I nod my head to the radio <laughs> listeners. Uh, what, about, what about views? Views help, right? Rewatch? Yeah. Re re yes, rewatch. More minutes equals better rankings. That's how the YouTube system works. The more you watch our videos, the more you rewatch our videos, the longer you watch our videos, the more it helps. <laughs> Though it probably, it probably ends up with diminishing returns after a certain person rewatching our videos. But don't feel badly about that. If you want to rewatch the video, rewatch it all you want. Yep. Even make fan edits. We don't care. Just make sure you link back to our original video. That's all you need to do because this is under Creative Commons and it's allowed. But now onto the actual end of the video with this has been our thoughts on Gravity Falls, the shorts, the pilot, and the special. Thank you for listening. Hope you've enjoyed. If you did, please click the like, please click the subscribe, and please click our Amazon links. Please, pretty please. If not, please look for my art on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. Maybe a Facebook. I don't know. It's my face. <laughs> ah. Also, if you want to help support this channel, please go to my Patreon, or if you want to donate a little bit, click on the coffee link. Thank you, and bye-bye. Get him! Get him! <laughs>